my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making one of my most favorite beverages ever, and it is for lemonade. More specifically, State Fair Lemonade. You know the lemonade that's made from actual lemons and you have that beautiful scent of lemon oil? Yes, that kind, because Memorial Day is just right around the corner, and for me, that's sort of the hallmark, the kind of marker of the beginning of summer. And lemonade is the drink of summer, in my opinion, or one of the drinks of summer. So the recipe I'm going to be testing out today comes from Food Wishes, a channel that's been on YouTube for the longest time. So many great recipes. I'll put a link down below. Chef John has a great voice and a terrific mustache as well. And this recipe looks lovely. There are specific techniques involved in terms of extracting that beautiful lemon scent that I think is essential to lemonade. You really need the lemon oil, in my opinion, to make a really fragrant and delicious lemonade. It's not just about the tang of the juice, it's the smell of the lemon oil. So let's go ahead and make us some lemonade. The first thing we're going to need, of course, are lemons. <laughs> so. I've got six lemons rolling around here. We're also going to need some sugar. Oh, I hope I have enough sugar. Curses, I should. Okay, so what I think is interesting about this recipe is that we are going to really capture those lemon oils and all that lemon oil is located in the rind or the zest. Actually not, there is a fruit flying here already. <laughs> So we have to capture some of that beautiful lemon oil and it is located in the beautiful zest of the lemon, which is just the yellow part of the lemon. We don't wanna get the pith, which is the bitter part underneath the zest. So using a vegetable peeler, we're just gonna peel it, but we just wanna remove this thin top layer here. We wanna avoid getting any of that pith if possible, so just the thinnest layer. And already, oh, it smells so good. And if you squeeze it in the light, you can see all of that beautiful oil coming out. That's what we wanna capture. So we're gonna zest all six lemons and just use some gentle pressure here because we don't want any of that. Now, of course, save the lemons after we've peeled them. We also want the tangy juice as well, but not quite yet. So it helps if you have a really sharp vegetable peeler because look, on the bottom here, there's no white pith. It's just zest. Have you ever lit citrus oil on fire or put it in front of a match? It makes these beautiful sparks. So you just take some citrus peel, orange peel, tangerine peel, lemon peel, and right in front of the flame of a candle, just squeeze this and you'll get these beautiful little crackles because the oil ignites. It's pretty great little experiment I did with my kiddos. Oh, it smells so good. My hands are gonna smell amazing after this. Now, to all of this beautiful zest, we're going to add a cup and a quarter of sugar. One cup of sugar. So we have a total of a cup and a quarter of sugar. Now we're going to toss this and the sugar is going to draw out any moisture from the zest and capture some of those oils as well. This smells heavenly. Alrighty, so now we're gonna let this rest anywhere from two hours to overnight so all those flavors can be extracted into the sugar. And then we can continue with the next step of making our lemonade. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit after this has done its resting. All right, my lovelies, it's been a few hours since I combined my sugar and zest together. And as you can see here, a lot of the water has come out of the zest and it has liquefied a bit. It's a little bit sandy, but very different than the mixture we started with. So now behind me, I've got some water coming up to a boil and we're going to create the lemony syrup infusion for our lemonade. So almost to a boil. So I'm gonna give this a stir and press on the lemon peels. I forgot to mention, before you even peel your lemons, make sure you wash them really, really well. So now 
It smells so good in here. I wish you could smell it. So lemony and zingy and bright. <sighs> oh, there's my water. So now we're going to pour four cups. Boiling water right on top of the lemon peels. Oh. Oh, it smells so good. Get every bit of that. Okay, so give this a little bit of a stir to help the sugar dissolve. Look at this beautiful yellow color it's already taken on. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that color. So, while that's cooling off a bit, we can squeeze the lemon juice. Cutting my lemons in half. I'm gonna try out this new juicer of mine. My other juicer I still have, which I love, my vintage juicer. My kids especially love using that juicer because you just get to pull on that handle and see all the juice come out. What I like about this, it has little increments on the side here, so I know exactly how much lemon juice I've got. But for this recipe, it's actually not that important because we just need the juice of those six lemons. So, juice away. And then we will compost the rest. So, out of curiosity, one large lemon has about, well, about an eighth of a cup of lemon juice. So it's going to vary about, some lemons seem to be juicier than others, so how much juice you actually get might vary a little bit. But so far out of two lemons, I've gotten a quarter cup. So by the end of this, we should have three quarters of a cup of pure lemon juice. Oh my gosh, did I ever tell you the story of when I got phytophotodermatitis? Both my kids and I got it because we made <laughs> lime aid using limes. We were on vacation, of course, and we were squeezing limes. And the next day, <laughs> we were walking around the theme park in the sun all day. And the following day, we had kind of itchy, burny skin on our hands. And then we noticed on the next day, it had a bit of a pattern to it. It was kind of like a chemical burn, a spattery. It was in between like our fingers here, but our, my husband, but my husband didn't have any signs of it at all. So I was researching and I found out we had phytophotodermatitis, which is caused from the oils of citrus, particularly limes and UV light. And it causes a chemical burn on your skin. It's a true thing. Sometimes they call it, I think bartenders burn because bartenders are often muddling limes and stuff and get the lime oils on their skin. And in the reaction with the UV lights, it burns your skin. It's the more you know. So make sure you wash your hands really thoroughly after squeezing citrus before going out in the sun. Okay, last half here. And actually we have more than three quarters of a cup. We have about almost a cup. And now we shall return to this bowl here, this beautiful concoction. Now this is pretty warm. And to speed things up, I'm going to strain our beautiful peels out. So I'm going to place the colander over here and then pour this over the top so we can get every little bit out. Okay. Beautiful. So. To this warm concoction, we're going to add one cup of ice. And that will help cool things off. Stir it. And at this point, it's almost at room temperature. We're going to add our juice. All that beautiful tanginess into our bowl. Now we want to thoroughly chill this before we serve it because warm lemonade cannot do it. So I'm going to place this in the refrigerator and chill it for a couple of hours. You can also just serve it with a bunch of ice if you're in a hurry, but I'm going to go ahead and cool mine off. So into the refrigerator. Here we go. Oh, 
We've got lots of mushrooms spawn in here. Welcome to my world. So while the lemonade is cooling off, I thought I'd make this a full experience by having my lemonade with a corn dog because that's what I think of when I think of state fair food. But when I went to the supermarket to look for frozen corn dogs, they didn't have any. I have a great corn dog recipe if you're looking to make them from scratch. I'll put the link down below to that. But I was just looking for the frozen variety, couldn't find them. So I thought, hmm, I guess I'm having hot dogs. And then I remembered I had this gadget. I've been holding on to this for years. This is the Coney Island steamer that is made by Sunbeam. By the looks of the packaging, it's from the 19, it's from 1978. This is 44 years old, 45, 78. 45? No, this is 43 years old. This is 43 years old. I found this at a junk shop a few years ago. I think I paid 10 bucks for it and let's cook with it. I hope it works. <laughs> so let's go ahead and unbox it so you can see. It's pretty straightforward. So I washed it when I got it and I kept it in this box. It still has its original papers. The Coney Island steamer, Frank and Bun instruction and recipes. Look at that. And it is very straightforward to use. And here is the steamer. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in. So I already washed this off, plugged it in, and now I'm going to add one ounce of water right into the trough. Add the tray back and then place a hot dog right there. And then I'll add the lid. And this is the bun steamer. You open up the bun and you rest it right on top, like that. So your bun gets nice and steamy. And look, there's already condensation forming on the inside, so it's working. Pretty simple unit here. You can only cook one hot dog at a time. I can hear something happening, like the water is heating. And this is probably pretty great for a kid to make their own snack. There you have it, the Coney Island steamer, Frank in bun. <laughs> Not quite as exciting as the hot dogger. Did you see that hot dog gadget? I'll put a link down below to that one where you could electrocute your hot dogs to cook them. Very, very thrilling. I think you could do six hot dogs at one time or eight. Yeah, very, very efficient. And uh, yeah, we'll set that for five minutes. And let's go check on our lemonade. All right, my lovelies, the Coney Island steamer has completed steaming. It has been five minutes. My lemonade is chilled. So let's have a taste of the state fair at home, shall we? <laughs> so let me grab a plate. Okay, here's the bun. Ooh, very pleasantly toasty and steamy, just as you would get out of a cart on the streets of any big city. And now we're going to open this part to reveal a steam dog. And then we'll place the hot dog right in the bun. <laughs> Beautiful. I like ketchup and I like mustard. I also like onions, but I think we'll just do the basics today. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Picture perfect. Lemonade. On ice. <laughs> very, very excited about this. All right, my lovelies, let's taste our lemonade first. Here we go, to the state fair. Cheers. It's better than the state fair. It's so stinking good. So good. Tangy, sweet zingy but filled with lemon fragrance it's just so so good cool and refreshing icy icy cold actually so good this is going to be gone tonight <laughs> my kids love lemonade they're going to love this mm. so good it makes me wish i lived in a warmer climate where i could actually have my own lemon tree that could live year round. I could keep a lemon tree inside, but 
I don't have a lot of sunlight. Anyways, I digress. If you have a lemon tree, I'm envious because you could make this all the time. Mm. Alrighty, let's try our steamed hot dog. This is really impressive because the bun has been steamed. It is really soft, super soft. Still soft. Alrighty, eat the moss. These are the tastes of summer. Icy cold, homemade lemonade, a hot dog, squishy bun, ketchup, mustard. It's <sighs> great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. The Coney Island steamer does a great job. My hot dog is thoroughly warmed up. I'm really impressed with the texture of the bun. The bun gets really soft and toasty. It's the best way to heat up a bun. I think it's even better than toasting it because it keeps the heat and it's got such a pillowy, soft texture to it. It's great for a hot dog. So I highly recommend this lemonade. It is a little bit of work to make, but so very worth it. And hot dogs, you know, hot dogs represent summer to me. They represent childhood. They represent children and just life in so many ways, especially since I've had my own children. And yeah, here's to summer. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my website where I'll include a printable version of this recipe. And yeah, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.